Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tech Talks with Tomer. I'm Tomer, VP of Product at the Stellar Development Foundation. And today I have with me uh, Kazim Uzimas, founder of ARF. Uh, ARF is a Swiss regulated global settlement banking platform that uses Stellar to provide short term liquidity in B2B financing. Kazim, what's up? Hi, thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, it was a pleasure actually being here. So uh, I'm Kazim. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, ARF. And well, uh, since 2018, we are uh, trying to build solutions using the digital assets, using proper uh, blockchain platforms to actually uh, enhance traditional finance. This was our goal uh, from the get-go. It, it took some time, but I think we are there now. So basically, we had a long journey with uh, Stellar, and it all started when we uh, when we heard your concept. Uh, initially, it started when we heard about the your collaboration with IBM and this new uh, approach to SWIFT and global settlements, basically. We were really interested at that time, and uh, we started studying, understanding the concepts, and uh, learned about your open protocols, SEP31, and all these protocols. And then we actually, we basically approached you and uh, tried to be an anchor at that time. And uh, ARF was trying to build its own network at that time, and so it was an interesting concept. There are two networks, Stellar already has a anchors, there's already working rails, stable coins issued on Stellar. And we were just building this and we discussed about the concept of being a meta anchor, uh, an anchor that is able to actually route a lot of uh, payments. So this this was our start. So there's a, there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, and maybe we can start by your personal journey. Like how did you end up in payments? Because I saw that uh, you have some background and you have a PhD in computer science, you worked on uh, Bitcoin scaling on IoT devices. How do payments fit in? It, well, initially, uh, it started uh, in. I worked uh, extensively in embedded uh, software design and development. So this is my background initially, and my focus was there. Uh, hence, IoT. Basically, this is what I do, what I learned, what I'm trained for. I worked for Siemens in Germany for some time, developing the core PLC technologies, etc. But at one point, I was mainly developing software for IPTV devices. Uh, in, in 2012, uh, basically, I decided that, okay, I have to build a company and just dive into this journey, become an entrepreneur. Uh, and I got, a, I got a service in mind, and I launched my startup, basically. The, last four, the next four years was, well, not pleasant. Uh, as an engineer, diving, becoming an entrepreneur is a tough thing. So I learned it the hard way. And I transformed my business in these four years uh, into a consultancy business. So I provided software services, write some code, etc. But I returned back to academia to start my PhD studies in 2016. And at that time, blockchain is the subject, right? So I, I know embedded systems. I, know, uh, I learned about blockchain. I learned about consensus protocols, how all these things work, etc. And I decided, okay, this, is, this can be used. Uh, in my world, in embedded world. And in the next one, two years, well, blockchain became my world. So embedded is just drifting away. And I decided to drop all my consultancy business and everything and dive into blockchain. And at that time, I started to work with companies from Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, even Chinese. So uh, very diverse people. And I worked on a lot of projects. So this is how I dived into blockchain. In 2018, we started off. So let's let's go deeper into into ARF. I, I heard you describe this as a meta anchor. Uh, so for our listeners, anchors are what in the Stellar ecosystem is what we call these uh, uh, interoperable on and off ramps. Um, what does it mean to be a meta anchor? So we were uh, we were trying to serve a lot of uh, financial institutions at that time. So every financial institution became an anchor uh, in Stellar Network, and we were providing services of complete package of software very basic uh, APIs uh, without a hassle, basically. So we call ourselves a meta anchor and we will be able to serve multiple financial institutions and connecting them to Stellar Network. So this was our initial start. And we developed this concept, well, APIs and everything, and onboarded clients, onboarded financial institutions. And from the time to time, we are trying to build that network. And uh, you of all people, you know how tough it is, right? So onboarding financial institutions, Threat-wise institutions 
to this new kind of settlement network. So there is this compliance department, there is this operations department. So there is a, how are we going to do the stablecoin thing? So there are a lot of questions, obviously. And we were, well, wrestling with that concept. And uh, one day we saw that, okay, Stellar is allocating a certain amount of sum uh, to actually enhance cross-border transfers by providing credit lines, etc. cetera. So you, Stellar is working on the concept, trying to understand and enhance, uh, remove all these frictions. And we told ourselves that, okay, it's a good idea. And there are a lot of ways to do it. And we developed on this concept. We already uh, integrated SEP31, which is the open protocol that Stellar developed for uh, cross-border settlements. So we know that, okay, we can even credit per transaction. We can do that. And we built out this concept. And we transformed, instead of doing payment operations, instead of doing all these settlements via APIs, etc., we uh, moved, shift our focus to becoming the treasury enhancer, basically. Providing liquidity, but very short term even for a single transaction. So ARF dived into new space. So this this is a new thing because if um, a financial institution tried to borrow USD, for example, Tomar, you, you know better than me, but there is this sending duration and there is this repayment duration. And even if you don't edit, do anything, it's going to take five to six days minimum to get an, uh, paid, paid back, basically. But ARF, it's one to five days, to do the whole thing, basically. So by utilizing these new kind of digital assets, we will be able to provide a service that has not been there before. And uh, you mentioned SEP31, which is Stellar's uh, cross-border payments, open specification. SEPs are standard uh, uh, ecosystem proposals, and, and there are ways for uh, people to define ways to interact with the Stellar network. And so we have a bunch of these, especially around cross-border payments. I am curious, uh, you know, you've integrated with a lot of different networks, a lot of different financial institution, uh, institutions. What is, uh, you know, what are the challenges there and what's the difference in experience between, you know, different networks and different financial institutions? Well, from the conceptual point of view, the biggest struggle was approaching things from a network angle and approaching things from a basically working capital provider angle. So these are two separate things, which makes a lot of difference, basically. So uh, especially on the decision maker side, this is a very straightforward thing. And when you provide liquidity, the systems are aligned to open doors for you, basically. Obviously, being in that role has its own challenges, like getting facility, etc. So we are looking to a new kind of financing model for licensed financial institutions. So what what are the risks? How are we going to operate? Uh, what is the technical infrastructure? For example, Stellar USDC provides the perfect uh, infrastructure for that, right? The settlement time is minimum. Uh, per transaction costs are minimum. So this way, we will be able to openly say that, okay, we can credit even a transaction by, by even a SEP31 transaction. So if, on an infrastructure level, the decision matrix is very low. There are only a handful of platforms that you will be able to build on top of these services. So Stellar is the perfect partner here. And at that time, again, Stellar's approach was, we are going to use USDC on Stellar Network. You guys designed the protocols and uh, you know that licensed financial institutions settle among each other with USD. So that's having this initial facility or initial uh, liquidity as USDC, again, uh, is a... Uh, is a very nice concept that is that made our lives much more easier in the end. So we have similar companies, right, providing liquidity to cross-border transfers, but they're native token, for example. Which leads to my my next question. I think you mentioned IBM Worldwire being the the thing that attracted you to Stellar. So we're talking about probably late 2017, early 2018 here. Yeah. Um, so um, you know, it's been a while. Have, how do you feel about the decision of going specifically with Stellar? Have you looked at other networks and, and compared them? Uh, so yeah, how, how do you feel about that? I think the fact didn't change that the, the protocol interoperability, the openness, the test suite, uh, and the adoption of financial institutions. So Stellar is always there. Basically, Stellar was, seems like a mandate, right? Uh, opening up, serving licensed financial institutions, providing this infrastructure, open protocols. So it's always there. Uh, and we obviously took great benefit of it. The, the thing which we struggled at the most, so again, there are two thought camps, I believe. In world worldwide model, basically you have multiple local stablecoins, right? 
and you have to have some kind of an there is an inherent effects inherent liquidity problem because there should be necessary liquidity especially from any currency to any currency right well our approach was simpler basically offloading a lot of intricate complicated problems there is no need for market making or providing liquidity for other currencies basically we learned a lot of your model basically it helped us a lot and i think our model has also changed a lot throughout the years or how we perceive the like uh the money movement i think that in the early days there was this expectation that you know we're going to have every local stable coin uh available on the network uh so any 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 on and off ramp will be attached to its own stable coin and i think what we learned and then the the liquidity will come through the dex and what we learned throughout the years is that sometimes like there's already liquidity in various like off-chain facilities and people just want to use uh you know usdc on-chain on-chain settlements or some other currency on chain and then do the last mile conversions off chain. So I think our definitions of like what an anchor is have like changed throughout the years. It used to be you had to issue your own asset. And today we have, you know, interoperable on and off ramps that use uh, assets issued by others. Even if you look at the MoneyGram integration, the actual asset that is being used is USDC. So MoneyGram is an anchor, but they use uh, an, an asset issued by someone else. So what's uh what's going on in ARF right now what are you working on what's what's coming around the corner uh, we are very excited basically so uh, we are operational for the last seven months um and our on-chain traffic basically exceeded uh 300 million oh wow that's awesome yeah 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 so things are really looking well uh and we are doing with uh we just uh we started with five million dollar facility and because of the nature of our model, we will be able to cycle that capital we see for five times, 4.5 times at least a month. So it provides us uh, a lot of flexibility. And when we are working with our uh, customers, for example, there is this payment fitness. We are receiving payments, repayments every day and providing credit lines. So there is this ongoing process uh, and whole organization is very much uh, zoning, uh, focusing on that. So uh, things are looking good. But right now we are understanding that we will be able to expand and build the model. So we, are, we have now an automated model that will be able to work with APIs or also with, well, batch files, you may say. Initially, uh, we can onboard an institution in a, very quickly, basically. We have this risk assessment process, we can onboard them. And then we can start operating right away by using these batch files. And we provide them, obviously, API integration capabilities. So this is... This is what we finished. This is what we built. And secondly, right now we are opening up ourselves to DeFi platforms. So uh, our bigger, biggest bottleneck is capital, basically, facility. We have a very nice transparency model. We have very clear risk assessment. Our working model is very simple and observable because it's on chain. But the facility, right now we have DeFi pools, right? We are looking to the next generation of DeFi lending. So, so far, no DeFi protocol, even real-world asset-backed ones, utilize the concept of receivables. You have this pool. Uh, well, there are major, major platforms like Goldfinches, Atlantis, etc. So, if you look at the pool, basically, there is an institution, borrows the money for one to two years, gives, pays interest every month, and at the end of the term, they pay the capital back. But right now, the next generation lending protocols may, are making the receivables visible too. So ARF will be able to open up a pool uh, in next generation protocols, which I'm going to do, which I'm going to go detail this. And now we will be able to withdraw funds, but we will be able to show our activity there. We will be able to create these on-chain receivables and it's visible. And everybody, every liquidity provider will be able to see it, see your performance, if there are late payments, if any defaults, so it's very transparent. So this is upcoming and again, uh, I believe SDF's vision and the Soroban and the protocols that are built on top of what this is, these are very aligned with us. I actually think that there's an interesting connection between uh, building, uh, you know, Soroban is our new smart contracts platform. And I do think that building smart contracts, even though you said that your embedded engineer days are behind you, I actually think there are a lot of similarities between being an embedded engineer and being a smart contract engineer. Because at the end of the day, you work in like this super constrained environment. Um, you know, the 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 risk 
is high. Like you need to, you know, anything that goes to production needs to be like well vetted. And the cost of, of you know, upgrading a firmware or changing things is actually very, very, uh, is very high, similar to smart contracts. So I actually think that the embedded engineer mindset is a great mindset for building uh, smart contracts. So I'm very, uh, I'm very excited to hear you guys are working on this. And and how's it been? Are you already working on on these smart contracts on Soroban? Hopefully, we will be able to show the strengths of Soroban. So we are positioning ourselves as the consumer uh, of the initial DeFi pools, DeFi protocols. So uh, we see a lot of them. We see we start to see the receivable concept, receivable oriented lending protocols. We are working with Huma protocol basically, and we are expecting to work with Blend initially. So Blend is this initiative that is launched on Soroban. And hopefully in the Q3, uh, we are going to see the uh, first versions of it. So there will be the primitives for opening up pools, putting in liquidity, and ART hopefully will be the party that will be able to withdraw funds, make the receivable visible on chain, and able to attract LPs more and more. Because this has not been done on, in the DeFi world before. So this is going to be a, a tidal shift, I believe. Yeah, we're also looking forward. Uh, Blend is by a company called Script3 that are building DeFi protocols on uh, on Stellar. I have been doing this for, for a while and now on Soroban. So um, uh, we're very excited about Blend. That's great. So uh, we're very excited about the work that you're doing uh, on in ARF and uh, looking forward to, to this uh, new brave world of, uh, of DeFi. And so thank you for joining. And, and where can people follow you and, uh, and ARF if they want to keep track of what you're up to? Well, we are at uh, www.arf.1. Uh, please visit. And if you are a licensed financial institution, please check out what we are offering. Awesome. Thanks for joining. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.